Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. So here's the ks.cfg file I'm going to use for our scripted unattended installation. What I've done is I've changed the IP address. So it's 192.168.6.81, so that's unique. And I've also changed the host name to esx04.itdvds.local. The other thing I've changed is the actual data store name. So it was esx01-local01. I changed it to esx04-local01 because that's the naming convention I use because when I add these to Virtual Center, I want all the names to be unique. And notice when I changed it here, I also had to change it down here. This is where it tells it to put the virtual disk for the service console on VMFS ESX04 local 01. So that's a data store that the service console is actually going to go on. Here's the size of the service console it's going to be 17,604 megabytes. You can see the different sizes I've specified for each partition. The slash var slash log partition is the default. 2 gigs, but I did make the root partition here 15 gigs. And you can see the max size option here is set at 15 gigs as well, so it's not going to auto grow, but that, that option isn't specified anyways. And notice it says on virtual disk, ESX console, and this is the virtual disk we created up here, ESX console, so everything matches up. So now the question is how do we use this file? Well, well we can, there are actually a number of ways we can do it, and I'll refer you back to that uh, document that we looked at in the last movie. It goes over the various ways. We're going to actually use a USB flash drive. We'll put this file on it. We are going to boot to the installer and select the scripted install from USB, and we'll have our flash drive plugged in via USB to our server. And what it's going to do when we select that option is that it's actually going to scan all the USB devices on that server and look for ks.cfg file in the root of that drive. The first one it finds, it's going to use. So the name of the file has to be ks.cfg, so very important. Okay, so I've inserted my USB flash drive that has my ks.cfg file on it into my server and I've also put the ESX4 DVD into the server. Now it's important that the CD-ROM is above removable de devices in your BIOS in the boot order uh, so that it doesn't try to boot off the USB key for some reason and it does boot off the DVD. So here we are and I'm going to actually scroll down by hitting the down arrow to ESX scripted install using USB ks.cfg. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and load ESX. So because we specified the CD ROM for the install files, it's going to use this DVD that we have inserted. If we specified some other place, that's where it would look for the installation files. Okay, and now it's going to run the installation from the ks.cfg file. So this is happening all automatically. You can see right now it's loading the drivers. And you can see we're getting a few warnings here, but right now it's creating the partitions. Everything's looking good. And you can see we've got a warning here that just lets us know that the maximum size option was specified, but the grow is not defined so it defaults to the grow parameter and grows it to the maximum size and now it's formatting the partitions and now it's installing the appropriate ESX packages and you can see we're already to the part where it's installing the system so we've answered all the questions and now it's installing it and you know, it'll take anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes to finish up but it was just that easy. Uh, we didn't have to do anything at all. Everything was in the answer file. So very quick and very easy. And it's, it's really a great way to install ESX if you have a lot of ESX servers to install.
Okay, and the installation is complete. Now we'll just press enter to reboot and we'll want to make sure we eject the DVD. And it's completely built, so it was completely hands-off.